welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. After this wild, unprecedented season of COVID-19 and a nail-biting presidential election, I know that many people now have new clarity and are more ready than ever for a new and different way of living. Welcome back to Sister Power, Barbara Mitchell and Dr. D. Aloha. Aloha. How are you, Barbara? Yes, I am trying to relax enough not to uh, be bumbling. You know, after the election, we all have to kind of work to just be calm and breathe. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, as our Madam Kamala Harris, the Vice President-elect Kamala Harris said, we did it, Joe. Well, we did it, we did it, we did it, we did it, we did it. The voters came out and we elected President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. And <laughs> Ladies, I think we deserve a toast. What do you think? Dr. D, do us the honor of saying a toast for our president-elect and vice president-elect. And Barbara will also do a toast for all the Black queens out there. If the floor is yours, Dr. D. May God bless President-elect Joseph R. Biden Jr. and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, a woman of many firsts. May God remember you today like Noah, protect you like Daniel, heal you like Noahman, favor you like Moses, prosper you like Isaac, anoint you like David, answer you like Elijah, use you like Paul, intervene for you like Esther, and fight for you like the Israelites. And may God bless America and everywhere else. Let us drink to that. All right, we'll drink to that toast. Mm -hmm. I'll drink to that. All right, Barbara, your toast. Well, unfortunately, I am just going to have to use my words because I was sitting at the computer and I don't have my glass. However, I want to just, just toast and bless everyone that voted for the Biden-Harris ticket. I realize that 57% of all white people voted for Trump. However, 42% of all white people voted for Harris and Biden. And I want to thank you for that. And the 19 million young and new voters, plus all of the Black people, are the ones that really pull Biden Harris to the top. And I am so grateful for that. And thanks to all of you. All right, I'll drink to that. I'll drink to that in our democracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know, democracy uh, is on the ballot. So, you know, that, that's what's going on. And, and right now, this is a democracy of purpose. This is what I'm loving about it. And just think, we have gone from hope to hate and now to heal. Hope hate and now to heal. Tell me your, your thoughts. Dr. D, when we finally heard the wonderful news that finally we we're going to make America, make America smart again, where were you? I want to hear you latest and how did you celebrate last Saturday? <laughs> I was on my knees praying to my almighty God because the country is in a dangerous place right now. And Americans need to come together and take this time to heal, to be reborn and to unite right now. America needs a path to, uh, of hope and light. So I was on my knees praying to God, meditating and pretty much it. How about you, Barbara? 
Tell us your. I, I just, every time I would think about it, I did a prayer because I could see how bad things would be. We had enough to overcome now. And, and another four years of the same, we were just going to be digging ourselves out of a deeper hole. And my, my uh, view said, as we are speaking now with our show, had Donald Trump been in office, I don't know if that would have been possible because we are not saying all how great he is. And that uh, people just don't realize how important it is to have a democracy. No, it is not perfect. Yes, we have to hold our representatives accountable, but at least we have an opportunity to do that. Yes, Harris, the first Black and first South Asian vice president-elect was standing on the shoulders of Shirley Chisholm and Geraldine Ferrara. I just love the picture of our president-elect, Joe Biden, and vice president-elect Kamala Harris. They're in unity. They have on their masks. They're jubilant. They're rejoicing. What else do you think is going on in that moment, Barbara? Oh, I think there's so much going into that moment that uh, they were uh, that uh, Biden was trying to explain all the things he wanted to do uh, in terms of uh, eliminating student loans and just just so many things were were going on that we were just. I, I was just, just so grateful. Dr. D, what were you feeling at that moment when you saw that picture? Well, a lot of things that were going on being that Vice President-elect Kamala Harris is the daughter of a Black Jamaican and South Asian immigrant parent. She's the first Black woman elected Vice President, the first Black woman to represent California United States Senate and only the second black woman ever to serve in the Senate. A lot of people were trying to discover what her race is, which really shouldn't matter. But I uh, personally, when all of this was going on, as I said, because I, I had to thank God for changing my heart towards Biden, because I had thought of Biden as a racist because he made some hurtful and racial statements like the statement he made in 1977. And I know that was 43 years ago, but he did make the statement that integrating black students would turn schools into a jungle, a racial jungle. And he said, I don't want my children to grow up in a jungle or racial jungle, but he apologized for it. And when you apologize, you're to be forgiven. And being that a lot of times, a lot of people, when they know they have done or said something wrong, won't even own up to it, let alone apologize. I just thank God for changing his heart. A change have come over him. I've seen the change that have come over him in 43 years. And that's where my focus was, thanking God for the change that have come over him. Yeah, well, because even when you bring it forward, 45 still has not, you know, dismissed or said he's not for white supremacy. So, and, and people still voted for him. And I think that Barbara has some statistics on that. I think you mentioned early, we need to hear that again on the, on the people who put him in the White House, even though he has lied, he's a thief, he's a, a racist, and I can go on and on and on. But Barbara, tell us more of the statistics. Well, yes, the statistics I saw where he actually won by 63 million votes in 2016. This time, 71 plus million people voted for him. Even though he lost, he actually increased the number of people who uh, believed in Trumpism, even though they had they knew what he stood for the last four years, they were just fine with that. They were ready to have four more years of that, and that was really that was really sad. And that's why I said I am so grateful for the forty-two percent 
of the whites that did not vote for him and the new voters that uh, uh, the quote says that there was 19 million new voters registered. And they, the, he gave the statistics and he said, if that 19 million had voted for Trump, it could have been a different story, but they voted for Biden and Harris. So okay. that shows that, you know, there is, there is hope. And a lot of those new voters were young. So that gives us hope for the future. Yes, it does. You know, and, and, and today, U.S. deaths from coronavirus is over 240,000. And I think if he put that type of energy that he is now to uh, not invite the new administration to the White House, if you put that energy into finding a cure, getting us a vaccine, letting us know the truth, we wouldn't be where we are now. But moving forward, Black women are magic, y'all. We have Stacey Abrams to thank for registering over 800,000 voters in Georgia. She's remarkable. Give me your thoughts on that, Deborah, Dr. D. Look at our queen. She is just magnificent. I first want to piggyback off of what Barbara said. Okay. Joe Biden got my attention when he said he's running for president to ease the racial divisions of our time. We're in a triple pandemic of racism, a public health crisis, and an economic crisis. It's necessary to have joy and celebration in America right now. And one thing my parents taught me is that you will continue to suffer if you have an emotional reaction to everything that is said to you. Sometimes you have to let things go. True power is sitting back and observing everything with logic. If words control you, that means that everyone else can control you. So we're at a point in America right now where we need to just breathe and allow things to pass, which is why I allowed what he said 43 years ago to pass, because we're at that point now. Because uh, Biden knows and even said who brought him to the dance. He also mentioned that Black votes was uh, what helped him get elected, and he vowed not to ever forget that. And I'm remembering a statement that he made when he said that, and I quote, he said, uh, always remember, history has lessons, lessons that must be learned. And I unquote, because he learned the lesson from that statement he made 43 years ago. And I'm not going to talk about that anymore. I know I've harped on it long enough, but I just Thank had you. to get that out there. But, you know, it, it's good to know where we, where we were at that time and where we are right now. I know I've said things 43 years ago that I wouldn't say today because I'm changed from the person I was 43 years ago. 43 years ago, I used a lot of profanity that I wouldn't dare let come out my mouth today. So I thank God for the change. So I understand change and, and I can appreciate change. The change has come over me and I appreciate the change that have come over him. Yeah. Well, yeah. I want to stay on that note in terms of people who say and do things and realize that they made a mistake. They are the best champions <laughs> going forward. Uh, I don't know, there's a word for that, but I won't use it on the, on the air. <laughs> but honestly, they, once they have done something and is they, and I, I'm, I don't mean this, this to be uh, negatively, but basically to say when they have found Jesus for lack of a better word, oh, you cannot, you cannot talk them down. I mean, they got it going on <laughs> and everyone else is really, you know, kind of beneath them now because they finally, for the lack of the word, seen the light. So that's, you know, that's kind of humorous, but we all know people like that. You know, when they were doing something, it was, but all of a sudden it's like, oh no. I mean, in fact, many times they're very harsh and judgmental on people who do uh, some of the things that they've already done. So that's how I felt about uh, Biden's statement all those years ago. Well, I would also like to think about something Barbara said, and I too would like to thank all the women and thank you to all the women of color Thank you to all the young new voters and all the older first time voters in general, just for exercising your right to vote. Thank you, thank you, thank you for letting your voice be heard. God bless you. And again, God bless America and everywhere else. 
I love and, 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 and as Maya Angelou said, you know, when you know better, you do better. Exactly. So let's, you know, let's move forward. Let's talk about uh, Kamala Harris's white suit. It spoke volumes. And Vice President elect white pantsuit and pussy bow blouse served to reinforce her message of unity and emancipation. And the color white has long been associated with women's suffrage movement, adopted as a symbol of morale, purity alongside green for hope and purple for dignity. Tell me, Barbara, when she was standing on that stage, giving her speech, speaking to brown girls, black girls, white girls, what was your feeling at that time? I just felt very proud. I felt very proud and very thankful to God because honestly, with the hostility over the last four years, I was just, I, I just really saw God in that because truthfully earlier, I did not, because of the hostility and the feelings for Obama, I really didn't think uh, Biden could win with a black woman on the ticket. I really didn't. So it was like, thank you, God. You look ahead and you know what we are questioning. And to me, it's just time. I mean, it was so time. And it says when it is time, it will happen. And that just renewed my faith a lot. Well, Dr. D, as she told the crowd in Delaware, while I may be the first woman in this office, I won't be the last. Tell our viewers some of your memorable moments. Well, the American story has always been deeply rooted in our ability to reinvent ourselves in the face of new challenges. And this is a new challenge. It's a new challenge, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just excited. You know, it's like a cloud has been lifted and over the, our nation. And let's move on and let's talk about pearls. And pearls are a symbol of power. Pearls are a symbol of class and sophistication. Pearls are a symbol of intelligence. Pearls are a symbol of elegance and beauty. These are all reassessed reasons Black women wear pearls. So Dr. D, you are wearing pink pearls, black pearls, and white pearls. What does it mean when a woman wears pearls? And what do they symbolize for you? Well, I was born in the month of June, and pearls are the birthstone for the month of June and has long been a symbol of purity. The ancient Greeks believed that pearls were the heart and tears of joy from Aphrodite, the goddess of love. The, um, what, it, what it means when a woman wears pearls more specifically, like the pink pearls, my earrings symbolize success, fame, and good fortune. And black or gold pearls, like on my wrist, represent wealth and prosperity. Ancient Greek legends thought that pearls were the tears of the gods. They also believed that wearing pearls would prevent women from crying on their wedding day. But um, some say black pearls are a symbol of hope for wounded hearts. Others say that they carry healing powers, while others believe that black pearls protect the wearer from negative energy. And I have a zero tolerance for negative energy. Black pearls are found in the Tahitian and French Polynesian islands. And they're exotic, they're rare, and of exceptional value. And they're very special. And what makes them so special largely is due to the fact that they're the only gem material formed and found within a living creature. Unlike diamonds, rubies, emeralds, and more, pearls require no cutting or polishing or putting through the fire before use. And they are simply stunning the way they naturally form. Oh, that's a lovely history lesson on pearls. And let's move that on. Was. 
Yeah, and I did not know all of I that. I didn't know all of that, and I love Pearl. I have all the colors too. Now I know I have all colors of pearls. And so let's talk about our historic black women. You know, I am so, Condoleezza Rice. Shirley Chisholm said, if you don't, if they if they don't have a chair for you at the table, bring a folding chair. <laughs> so I'm loving that. So Barbara, where do you see the future? I see the future, as Ms. Harris said, she is the first, but she will not be the last. And I see um, just what has happened with this election and with uh, Georgia. Uh, it is bringing attention to the fact of the power within the Black women. And I believe that it will um, demand respect, more respect, whether they want to give it or not, just because they want the power and that which comes with it. And that's okay. You know, you don't have to just be madly in love with us. Just give us our, allow us our fair share because you're not giving us anything. Just get out of the way. <laughs> and uh, that's been kind of a, I think that's also a fear. I won't go into that. Because if we have come thus far, basically with someone having their foot on our head, imagine just having equal opportunity, what we will and could have accomplished. But Dr. D, historic women, one message that is important to you when you see all that is happening today Give us one message that is important to you. One message about whom? From you. From you. Okay, a message that is important to me would be that we as a people help make America smart by making smart investments in manufacturing and technology, give our workers and, and our companies the tools that they need to compete Give everybody a seat at the table. Use taxpayers' dollars to buy American and spark American innovations and stand up to the Chinese government's abuses and insist on fair trade and extend opportunity to all Americans. Uh, many of the products that are being made abroad could be made right here in America today. And if we do these things with an unwavering commitment to build American industrial strength, which we will power using clean energy that we also harvest here in America, will also lead in making the cutting edge products and services of tomorrow. This will also do more than bring back the jobs that we have lost uh, due to COVID-19. All right, now let's set the stage again. We're on our second episode, uh, Make America Smart Again. So we have a Catholic, a woman of color, a teacher, and a Jew walk into the White House with a rescue dog. <laughs> now, <laughs> I, I'm just loving that. I, I'm loving that it is not so simple, but it, it resonates to the heart. And let's just talk about Rosa Park for a moment. What I love about that is Rosa set so Ruby could walk and so Kamala could run. Tell me about that statement. What are you feeling about that, Barbara? I love it. I, I absolutely love it. And I just know, I mean, there's so much proof with equal opportunity, how much we can do and how much farther along the country would be if people would not see it as a threat, but see it as an advantage, which it really is. Each of us, I know I can, being an entrepreneur, think of all the jobs that I could have uh, made possible had someone gotten out of my way and thought, no, you're not supposed to do that. Someone else is supposed to do that. And just realize, don't suppress anyone. Just get out of the way and it will make all of us better. 
Dr. D, your thoughts. And in closing, in, in two minutes or less, ladies, we are going to just relish in this moment. And, and Dr. D, just tell us some, something that you want to let the Sister Power viewers know. You say in two minutes or less? Yes, in <laughs> two minutes or less. <laughs> uh, well, Make America Smart Again by extending by American to other forms of government assistance. For example, when the government is invested in research and development, it should be supporting uh, manufacturing and sourcing in America. No more in invented here and make it over there in another foreign country. Taxpayers funded research investments in the 20, 20th century and laid the foundation for MRI technology. And some of the companies directly benefiting from these innovations are moving MRI productions to China. If companies benefit from taxpayers' uh, funded research that leads to new products and profits, these profits should be made in the United States, or the companies should reimburse the government for its support. The days of taxpayer benefits going to companies that seek to outsource jobs or, or avoid paying their fair share of taxes will be over. Make America Smart Again by saving and reviving American auto industry. Make America Smart Again by investing at least $100 billion in historically black colleges and universities, tribal colleges and universities, the minority uh, serving institutions. Make America Smart Again is absolutely crazy how people get triggered and outraged over a hat. And, and the easiest way for other nations to take over our nation, which is a powerful nation, is to weaken them by dividing them and let them go against each other, which is what's happening right now. That's how nations fall. Here we are falling. All right. Barbara. My thing is education. I want to see the entire public school uh, curriculum updated. And I want it everything that it one needs to live and function to be taught. So that is my ultimate goal, is to update the material teach everything from manners to cooking to many of those things that we had uh, when we were in school, in addition to uh, things that we need to know now. I mean, now we've got to go back and teach what truth means and honesty means and why a lie is bad. So many things that we took for granted or I took for granted that people knew. I am just amazed to know that they don't know. So. Yeah. My thing is to go back to education from pre-K on. But thank you, ladies. Thank you, Queens. Thank you, Dr. D. Thank you, Barbara Mitchell. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Thank you for watching Sister Par Hawaii. No, this is Sister Par, and we're sisters in Par in Hawaii as well. Please take care of yourself and each other. Please wear your masks, people. Aloha. <laughs>